Hi everyone, and welcome to my first installment of Sip Around the World with Sarah. Today we're going to be focusing on a German Riesling, specifically this one called Spritzer Riesling 101. So first, just a couple fun facts about the German wine region in general. Germany has some of the most northern, some of the coldest, and some of the steepest wine regions in the world, which can make it really fun uh, for people having to pick those grapes in the middle of winter. Uh, Riesling is definitely what Germany is known for. It is the most highly planted grape, uh, known for low alcohol, high acidity, and really aromatic, beautiful minerality in their wines. The most highest planted red grape is Spotburgunder, which is German for Pinot Noir. So I think that's kind of a fun little uh, name if you know your Pinot Noir as well. Um, so starting with this bottle, uh, you can see that it's shaped in a flute shape, which is very traditional for Rieslings um, in Alsace, France, and, and really kind of any Rieslings now will be shaped in this flute bottle. Uh, and really simple on the front, you just see Spritzer, which is the name of the producer. And I know that because on the back, it says Weingut Joseph Spritzer. And it, by the way, excuse all of my German throughout this entire uh, video. Uh, not my fault. Um, and so Weingut means uh, wine producer, uh, you know, the wine maker, and that's Joseph Spritzer, who the name, who the wine is named after. You'll also see on the back, uh, 2017, so that's gonna be the year, and Rheingau is gonna be the region. So Rheingau is a region along the Rhine River in Germany that's famous for their Rieslings. Uh, Moselle is probably another really big region that, that you can kind of recognize on bottles. And then really cool here, you'll see that it says Deutscher Qualitätswein. Say that five times fast. So here, uh, Qualitätswein is the second highest level of quality in Germany. The highest is Produktatswein. Um, so when you look at that, you kind of can just tell your quality level right off the bat. And Deutscher just means you're looking at a wine that's uh, from Germany. Uh, you'll see an AP number listed on any German wine. The Germans are very organized people, so they actually have an approval number on every single wine, so that if you look up that number, you'll always be able to find that exact bottle again, when it was approved, and wine of origin facts, and all sorts of um, facts you need to know about your wine. Uh, you'll see still wine, Ostreich on the back is gonna be the village that this wine was made in, uh, contains sulfites, that's a warning that all wines pretty much have to uh, tell you about and then um, here you'll see the alcohol is 11% by volume which is actually pretty high end for a German Riesling. I would say the average alcohol can be 7-8% um, because it is a colder region. Um, the grapes don't get as ripe meaning that the alcohol level is lower as well. Um, but in the Rheingau, it is one of the warmer regions and uh, they're able to get their grapes a little riper. Uh, especially important in Germany is their soil. They have some lovely slate soil. So in the Moselle, it's like a blue slate. In the Rheingau specifically, it's a, a red slate. And what that does, it's a heat retaining soil. So they can use all of the warmth they can get since it's pretty cold. So that soil just retains all the heat and pushes it back up to the grapes. Um, which helps them get that ripeness that they need. So, now to the fun part, let's taste this German Riesling. Uh, looking at it, you can just see that it's clear, pale, um, like a pale straw yellow. Uh, and then when you look for the little uh, alcohol coming down, you can see that it's pretty low alcohol. Uh, and then when I give it a nice sniff, I would say this is like a medium to low intensity um, on the nose, and it's, uh, what jumps out at me right away is kind of like citrus, lemon, uh, and then a, little, a lot of like stone fruit, uh, like wet stone kind of qualities, which is usually what you think of when you think of a wine that has high minerality. Um, maybe even a little bit of grapefruit here. Mmm, and then what I find so fun about um, German Rieslings is they really kind of jump off your tongue and still getting that uh, bright citrus um, like again lemon grapefruit wet stone my mouth is definitely watering so I'd say high acidity wine um, but and then there's like a little bit of that residual sugar that little uh, sweetness in the wine as well which makes this a lovely pairing wine with Indian and Thai food anything that has a little bit of a spice 
that sweetness will cut right through any of that spice and be a perfect little cleanser in between your bites. Um, and so what's also lovely about German Rieslings is they're known to kind of almost be, they almost taste like you could be drinking a sparkling wine because it's like junk, the minerality is so vibrant, it's almost jumping off my tongue, um, even though this is a still wine. So really, really fun wine to try if you've never had a German Riesling, because uh, a lot of times Rieslings you think of something like cloyingly sweet, when really so many German Rieslings are beautifully dry and, and lovely, and that high acid is so great for pairing with so many foods. Um, so I would definitely go to your store, uh, try to find some fun uh, German Riesling uh, next time you're shopping. This one specifically I got for $14.99, so not bad at all for a Qualitats wine, uh, lovely Riesling, and I got it from K&L Wine Merchants, if you're looking. Um, so thanks so much, hope you enjoyed uh, this little version of Sipping Around the World with Sarah. Bye.